Hi, I'm, I'm Steve Drake and I own Drake's Restaurant with my wife, Serena. We've been here for about eight or nine years. Uh, we got a star a year after we opened. The type of food that we cook here is very much flavour focused. Um, just in a focus on ingredients and getting really interesting flavours together on a plate. My first sort of job, it was a Saturday job, and um, I used to do a paper round and then the lady who worked in the, the CAF, she used to come and collect her paper every morning and then she said she needed somebody to help making the bacon sandwiches and that on a Saturday. So it kind of started from there. In, in home economics at school, I, I got a D, GCSE which for me was brilliant. <laughs> tea. Um, so I know I think I was very good at the practical side of it um, and the teachers were very encouraging. When I had this feeling that being a chef, being creative, it, it kind of gave me a real buzz and a kind of reward for my efforts. I felt right back then that this could be a career for me. On the day I left school, um, I didn't have a job and uh, I picked the yellow pages up. There was a restaurant called the Old Vienna Restaurants so I, I rung them up, they said, yeah, okay, come along for a, um, you know, to work an evening. And I started working there part-time. I enrolled at Southend College in the September of that year when I first started at the Old Vienna. And there was a, a lecturer there called, uh, I think his name was Keith Bundy. He'd just come from big London. So he kind of inspired me then to write to the three biggest hotels at the time that I'd heard of in London. And they were the Dorchester, they were the Ritz and the Savoy. Ritz said, come for an interview. So the chef de cuisine at the Ritz at the time was uh, Keith Stanley. I actually started there on my 17th birthday. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I remember he had his name stitched in the corner of his apron down the bottom and I was working away. And I remember this figure walking over the side and I could just see K Stanley on my head. I was like this, like that. but he was great. He was a great guy. When I decided to sort of go into this career, my family and my teachers and that were all quite excited really and I remember the first year I got everybody got me a cookery book for Christmas and it was a nightmare I had so many cookery books it was unbelievable I stayed at the Ritz for a year and I met loads of people loads of chefs like incredible it was amazing uh, and one guy I met was Andrew McLeish and uh, I met him and he was working for Nicola Dennis at the time and uh, Nicola Dennis was obviously a legend at that, at that time and, and still is. And um, and he said, oh, there's a job going at Shane Eco. And I thought, well, that sounds exciting. There weren't as many two stars around at the time then like there are now. And, you know, it was quite a big thing. I just remember feeling, wow, you know, I cried the day I left there because I absolutely loved it. I decided by then that I wanted my own business. I thought, okay, well, I need to go back to college. So I went back and I did a BTEC in business studies. Well, whilst I was doing this BTEC, um, I, I needed somewhere to live. And uh, I got a job in, in a pub. I ended up managing it for a few weeks whilst the owners were on holiday. It's quite a big pub and there was quite a lot going on. And I just think I was only like 20 or something at the time. But also it was an amazing experience, you know, to be left with that kind of responsibility. I think a lot of chefs nowadays would probably gain from things like that. I really miss the fine dining scene. And I worked after working at the pub, I really wanted to get back into it. So uh, I called Nico Ledenis up again. And by this time he had gone on to bigger things and he had moved to Park Lane, he had gotten three stars. It was such, such a nice thing because I, I went along there and he said, oh, it's great that you've come back. But when he brought his book out, Nico, he gave us all a copy and, and he wrote a lovely sort of passage in the front for me about how I'm going to become one of the greatest chefs in, in Britain. Now, of course, we all know that's a bit of a joke, but, but it was such a lovely thing for him to do and quite inspiring. Then I got the opportunity to go and work for Marco at the Oak Room. I was on the fish for a year, um, which was amazing. Sort of the skill and technique that I learned in that year was really invaluable. The job of the aubergine came up with William Drabble, um, and I'd met him at Shane, Shane Eco um, before. It was just after the... Um, Ramsey had left the aubergine, real kind of like high pressure stuff, but more importantly, it was like the first experience I'd ever had of opening a new business. So then when I had this urge to do that myself, I had this job come up for Drake's on the Pond uh, in Avenger Hammer. So, so I had the opportunity of my kind of first head chef's job. And I was the only chef there. I was there almost four years. Um, I got a Michelin star after a couple of years of being there. Um, also, I won the Rue scholarship while I was there. Winning the Rue Scholarship was, was incredible because it also helped to raise my profile at the time when I didn't really have a profile. <laughs> I got the opportunity to go to Marc Viral in uh, Ancy, but it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that food doesn't need to be that complicated and you don't need to necessarily, if you don't want to, have an elaborate technique over flavour. Well, whilst I was working at Drake's of the Pond, I was looking for a site for us. I was driving past here on the way home every night 
and we noticed that it was closed a lot. I told Serena's dad, who's he's a lot more clever than I am, and uh, he gave the guy a ring. We put together a plan, it took six months really, of getting him to sell it. We, we risked a lot of the time, a hell of a lot, and I, I, don't, I look back and I think we were crazy. We've grown into the building as the years have gone past, and we've been here quite a while now. Um, and we've now got 40, 44 covers, 42 covers. Uh, we do, we've got a small bar, uh, we've got a huge kitchen. We've also got a lovely garden, which we're now starting to grow a few vegetables and use them on the menu. We've got a great site, we're very, very lucky. The uh, hospitality industry, I, I think I'd be lost without it, to be honest. Yeah, I think, oh yeah, maybe I could have made my life easier doing it this way or that way or this way. But it has got to. It has got me to where I am now. If, if I could offer any any advice to anybody, really, you know, I I, I would say to stick with the creative side of cooking. That's the only thing that's kept me going. Here.